Good evening. Welcome to our program, What's New? Uh, I and ours are here, and we are missing our one partner, but we are hopeful that she will come back. But we do have a guest tonight, and ours will give you the name of the guest, and we will get started with our lovely smiling guest. <laughs> And our guest is from the Extension Office, and you want to introduce yourself sure. and tell them what position you have? Uh, my name is Katie Kamler. I'm the Horticulture Specialist uh, for University of Missouri Extension. I'm headquartered here in St. Genevieve, but cover seven different counties. Uh, I'm also the County Program Director, so uh, that means I kind of help organize any programs coming into the county and, and oversee some of the office stuff. But uh, Summer is a busy time. I was going to say, you're a busy lady. <laughs> and uh, summer's uh, not so much as far as, as my programming goes uh, because gardening stuff, everybody's out in the gardens. They don't want to come here about gardens unless they have a problem. Then they come to the office with whatever bag of bugs or uh, <laughs> pieces of plants or what have you that, that uh, comes into the office uh, for me to look at and see if we can figure out what's going on. And anymore, now with smartphones, I get a lot of pictures oh, uh, yeah, on, cool. on phones, which pictures are always helpful. Uh, but I encourage people to take some far away, some close, and I've also discovered um, sometimes people have trouble focusing on what I actually need to see. <laughs> I have one that sent me pictures of blackberries one time, and the blackberry was always out of focus. The grass was perfect. <laughs> so it made it really hard to determine what was going on. <laughs> oh, gosh. But uh, lots of stuff going on as far as summer goes. Uh, Iris and I were just talking before this started that um, we ha have a uh, food preservation class for youth, uh, ages, or third grade through sixth grade. And um, that is going on tomorrow. We have spots for three more kids if anybody is interested. The cost is $20. And it goes from 8.30 to uh, 3 at the extension office. And they get to make uh, a fruit leather, strawberry jam, and dill pickles. And they'll get to take each of those home with them at the end of the day. And then they can turn around and save that and enter it in the fair, which is coming up soon. So that's another thing. Uh, St. Genevieve County 4-H Fair and Chicken Fry is the 13th of July, which, you know, Ooh. that's a month away yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> and it'll be here before we know it. That's uh, for sure. Yes. So uh, they'll have the fried chicken, liver dumplings, green beans, mashed potatoes, gravy slaw, bread, desserts, and a drink. And it's always very nice. Yep. Uh, $8 for a large plate, uh, $7 for a small, and additional chicken, a dollar each. So uh, it's a good deal and a good way to support 4-H. That's their fundraiser for the year. And oh. the kids work at it uh, and help with all of that. So. How many are in the 4-H now? Um, I don't know what the latest numbers are, but we can always use more. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good program. It is. I grew up in 4-H, so I did too. Uh, yes, I, I always encourage uh, kids to sign up because it's a good program. We're also in the process, we're still waiting for campus to clear their side of it, but we will be hiring a 4-H youth, a 4 -H youth uh, program assistant here oh, again, okay. uh, a part-time position. And uh, as soon as we hear back from campus, we've got all our end done. Now we're just waiting for campus to come through on theirs. So hopefully here shortly we'll, we'll have somebody in that position. That'll be somebody that will receive the 4-H class. Yes, yes, exactly. And since we're talking about fairs, of course, uh, the, the chicken fries, the Thursday night and the county fair starts after that. Right. And then um, because these just arrived in our office, we have the state fair. Oh. Uh, brochures if anybody's interested in that because the state fair is August 10th through 20th and uh, if you've never been it's a neat experience I haven't been since I was in high school but I still remember it was it was quite a neat neat thing uh, I actually did a 4-H demonstration was the reason I went so, oh, really? well, how cool. <laughs> so one of these days I'd like to go back and, uh, and see what it is now as an adult <laughs> so the kids enter their 
uh, items that they do in the fair, most of them. Um, they get to the fair. They get, can they enter in the state fair? It, what they do? They uh, they livestock is a little in. different. Um, they, they can actually register livestock and, and not have to be a winner at the county oh, fair. Okay. Now, now, projects uh, like if they did did the canned goods or they did crocheting or they did yeah. woodworking or whatever it has to be an award winner at the county fair oh, before God. it goes to the it can is eligible to go to the state fair oh so um but uh always fun uh state fair's got lots of interesting things going on with uh, and lots of activities mm -hmm. and then uh this summer we decided, uh, my co-workers and I in southeast Missouri decided that we were going to steal Illinois Extension's idea. They have twilight tours. So we were like, we could do twilight oh, tours. Yeah, that sounds sure. like fun. Uh, so, uh, so far this year we've done uh, Pinecrest Azaleas in Oak Ridge, uh, which was beautiful. I'd never been there before, so it was great. Uh, lots of azaleas out in the woods, and they planted that starting mm. in the 60s, I oh, believe. Oh, yeah. Didn't a guy do that? Yes. With, yeah. And his family has continued that, and just a beautiful place. So we did that in April. Uh, we had one scheduled for a high tunnel in May, but that was when the river was up, and that was in Scott County, and he said you couldn't, uh, you couldn't have parked any vehicles <laughs> because they would have got stuck. So we decided, no, we didn't want to do that. We will reschedule his for later. Um, and then a few weeks ago, we did Highland Blueberry Farm in Perry County. Oh, nice. uh, This is their last year in production, so we decided we'd better get one more last tour in because he's always been good to work with Extension as far as doing tours and, and that type of thing. So. Oh, that's good. So we got one last tour in, and that was, we couldn't ask for a nicer evening. <laughs> it was, you know, those 75 degree evenings and the oh, breeze blowing, yeah. you know, it was, it was a really nice day. Uh, ours uh, in July is going to be at Mineral Area College, and we're going to tour their greenhouses. They have some demonstration plots, uh, pollinator gardens. And also, uh, most people haven't ever been on a professional type or college baseball field, and they maintain the baseball field there too. So that's another opportunity for something a little different oh that most goodness. people aren't aren't involved in. So uh, Chad's gonna let us tour that. That's July fifth. Uh, so probably the weather isn't going to be quite as nice by then. But, <laughs> I don't uh, know. One time I remember we wore coats on the 4th sure, of July. Sure, you never know. It is Missouri. You yeah. never know with the weather. Uh, so the uh, the tours are $5 uh, each uh, for registration. Oh, Just call and let, let me know that no, you're planning something. on coming uh, so we can have an idea for refreshments because uh, usually my coworkers and I bake something and uh, oh, yeah. I always have water and, and oh, yeah. all of that for the, uh, the tours. And that's, that's July's. I think August is going to be Crest Farm uh, uh, Garden Preserve up in Hillsboro. They do a lot of native plants and different things. And let's see, I'm trying to think. I think um, September is an orchard in uh, near Jackson. Uh, it's a fairly new orchard that's been put in. And then September or October is going to be uh, ha Hamra's uh, hydroponic operation in uh, Sykeston. Uh, we toured it a year ago or so, and they were in the process of putting it in. We saw their production, or their, the greenhouses were not up yet. We saw oh. their, their big empty shed where they were having their packing house and their offices. Um, but it was in the process of being constructed. And uh, this guy started, I don't know, uh, quite a few years ago, but he does the farm to school. So he is growing all the produce and he is shipping to schools and hospitals and I think maybe some prisons and different things oh, really? in four states. Well, and he, he is actually looking to expand, once he gets this facility up and going, he's actually looking to expand in the Kansas City area, and then he had several other places as he progresses through, but he's amazing to listen to and, and learn about the hydroponics. And, and they don't use chemicals started. either, do they? Or do they use Yes. Them? They do? Um, a hydroponic situation is basically no soil. Mm -hmm. So it is chemical fertilizer that oh, is in, okay. fed in that water. 
Um, and uh, organic does not mean it's not sprayed. It just means it was uh, the products that are used was once living. So um, organic doesn't mean it's healthier or, or not sprayed. So that, really? that's a common misconception. Well, and if you, if you would like to look it up, it's called OMRI, which is the organic um, O-R-M-I. And that's the list of pesticides that they can, are actually approved. So organic, the definition is it was once living. So, you know, uh, cyanide, it's actually an organic compound. Do you want to uh, have some cyanide? No, <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, by its definition, that's an organic compound. Uh, not that that's legal to use on organic produce or anything mm -hmm. like that, but, but that's an example that that it was something huh. that was once living. So that's, that. that's something to, to think about. And, uh, and we hope everybody is spraying by, if they are doing any type of spraying for insects or disease or whatever, the biggest thing is to follow the label. Mm -hmm. You follow the label, they all have pre-harvest intervals, all of that, and those are there for a reason and the label is the law. So. And I did not know that. Yep. And that's part of what I always try to, to teach because uh, that, that's a big misconception that we see. It is, and they really charge a lot more for that stuff. Yep. Well, it is a lot harder to grow organically. Uh, the, the pesticides are more expensive, and a lot of times they don't have as good of options. They don't, they're not as effective. They don't work as well. Oh. Uh, or um, sometimes they have a shorter life that this will only work for three days, so you have oh, to spray okay. again every three days or, or something like that. There, there are differences. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's, it's hard to get a hold of some of the organic chemicals and, and organic uh, mulch or manures considered organic, but you have to be careful with that. And there have been some uh, herbicide contaminations in manures and compost in the last few years. So well, that's because they eat with. stuff. That's right. <laughs> they eat stuff that's been sprayed and pass yep. it on. <laughs> yep, and it, it does happen, definitely. Share it. So, so that, that's uh, another, another concern. But there are so many organic practices that are very good, and every gardener should, should use them. It's uh, growing resistant varieties to diseases, which in Missouri, we have lots of disease problems in plants because we have this roller coaster weather mm -hmm. and high humidity that we were talking about yesterday, it hit you in the face. So yeah. we tend to have lots of disease problems from that. So if you grow varieties that have resistance, you'll have less problems, but resistance doesn't mean they won't get it. <laughs> we still have, uh, you know, knockout roses, very popular. Lots of people have them in their garden. They're supposed to be resistant to black spot. Now, a few years ago, it was raining so much, we yeah. had black spot. You bet knockout you. Knockout roses, so. Cause uh, I have them. <laughs> yep. I have those knockout roses. So the, those are some of the things to think about. And always, the healthier the soil is, the healthier your plants are going to be. And a plant that is stressed is going to have more problems. So if you can keep that plant healthy with fertilizer, water, um, good soils, it's going to be better able to withstand disease or insect problems. OK, somebody always says put coffee grounds around your plants. Sure. OK, is coffee grounds really good for your plants? It doesn't matter. It, it's just adding organic matter. So. So it's it, oh, okay. so long as you're not piling them on, you know, and the old and thing, uh, yeah, more is better is not necessarily the case. Well, you know, like to sprinkle them sure. around. Yeah, that not a problem. I was wondering, but something was chewing away in my roses. And I can tell you what that is. I've had lots of calls about it already this year. It's called rose slug. Uh, so did the leaves almost turn brown? You could kind of see through them. Well, the leaves look like something something was just going up there and nibbling on them. Oh, okay. Well, that might be some uh, an animal then. Well, I think I've got a little rabbit that loves that, this one rose. That would <laughs> and be. he goes up just as far because as the rose goes up get. to here, and I have leaves from okay. here down, and then from here down, I don't have anything. That, just little nibbles. That does sound like a rabbit. Uh, squirrels will chew around on stuff yes. too. Yes. They just uh, love them. But yeah, we've had lots of <laughs> insect problems early this year with rose slugs in, in uh, roses. And basically, they're a little tiny green caterpillar. And people don't actually notice the caterpillar. They're like, all of a sudden, my rose turned brown. 
and uh, they feed in such a way that it call, it's called window painting. So you could actually look at the leaf and see through it. Yes. Um, it's got a kind of film. They don't eat mm -hmm. all the way through the leaf. So um, it's a little bit caterpillar and they're pretty easy to control and the, the rose bush is going to leaf back out, but it's just, they look pretty bad for a while. Oh yeah, they just look like stems with the rose yeah. on top and it looks so stupid. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> And of course now Japanese beetles are starting, so you know they like roses too. Well, I've got box of elders. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, I've got tons of them and there's no, because I had the man there and he sprayed for them. And I had, did not know this and he told me to take all my mulch out and replace it with rocks. Because that's exactly where the box elders were, where my mulch was. Nowhere else. Well, I disagree with that because, one, rocks don't provide you anything for your, your soil. They're just looking. They're, they're, they're just permanent. nice to look at. And <laughs> they get know, hot, too. Our building, it, you know, it's all rock in front of there. I we know. have box elder bugs. So, Do you? Oh, yeah. So it doesn't matter. Um, you know, there used to be the street maples there at the office, but they haven't been there for years, but we still have box elder bugs. I don't have any trees around, and there's none around in the neighborhood, and oh my God, you should... They don't just like box elder, though. <laughs> <laughs> they like maples. They like uh, maples and box elder in the same family, and they'll get on other things, too. But generally speaking, we don't see them as feeding. They're usually just annoying because they're on they your are. house or on your... They're just congregating. Hey, yep. Just crawl all over. <laughs> yep, they congregate. Our oh, hollyhocks just... have, like, lines in the leaves. Yes. What is that? Is that the... No, uh, that is actually called a leaf miner, and they um, there's nothing you can do about them because they're in between the leaf layers. And that's, what I, that's what they look like. Yep. I was like, oh my gosh. That's yep, so, so they're called leaf miners. So, so they get in there and, and, and eat out in the sea. Huh? Yep. <laughs> so, Fill their tummies. Yep, and typically they don't do enough damage. It's just mm -hmm. they look funny and yeah. yeah. <laughs> and sometimes if there's enough of them in the leaves, they'll they'll dry up. But uh -huh. but yeah, not much we can do about those. They get in the leaf and we can't get to them. <laughs> well, yeah, we had them last year. They were really bad last year. Not and they tend to like year. certain things. Hollyhocks is one. Uh, columbine. The they're always on those. Oh my gosh! Leaves. Really. Hmm, that's nice to know. <laughs> <laughs> and the other day I was out sitting on a bench and this white puff came by and I thought it was a piece of cottonwood. Mm -hmm. And I put my, I had a piece of paper towel in my hand and I put it up and I caught it mm -hmm. and it was a little bug that looked like it had feathers on it. Okay, yeah. What are those? I am not sure if it might be um, one of the aphids. Some of the aphids are called woolly aphids. Yeah, they they look like a fluff ball, and uh, this was teeny tiny, uh, and it yeah. it could be, and without seeing it, I don't know for sure, but um, they said they're all over at it. Um, the kids were saying they're all over at Han State Park. Uh, okay, and they were pretty big out there, but this one was really tiny. Uh huh. Then there was another bug on the picnic table the day that was black, and he was long, about that long. And he had a red spot on his back, or a white one, one or the other. Anyway, he, he had a thing that looked like a straw sticking out about that long. <laughs> I was like, look at this funny bug. <laughs> don't know what that well, one Well, and either. yeah, if so they, they have that uh, straw-like mouth part, you really don't want to bother them because the, the, some of those can bite, and they say they're fairly painful. Oh, really? Um, and... Uh, Assassin bug is one, and it is called an assassin bug because it eats other bugs. They're good to have around, but, uh, and I, I have, I'd always heard that they had a painful bite. I've never messed with them to find out personally, but I mentioned that in a class one time, and somebody said, yes, they really do hurt. <laughs> Don't mess with them. <laughs> oh, experience uh, But yeah, there, there are a lot of insects that they, they are called piercing sucking mouth parts. So I, I tell people it is like a giant straw. So oh they, they pierce and suck out juices, whether it's plants or whether it's other insects. Yeah, this so. is teeny tiny old bug. Mm -hmm. Maybe they had that long, the nose, the, the nose yeah. was almost as long as he was. Sure. Well, I, I don't have ants, but I sure have box holders. <laughs> she sprayed for all of them, so I hope they're gone. <laughs> they're terrible. They're, they're a nuisance.
There's so many of them. I mean, they just, oh. Yep. But okay. the, the nice thing about it, as many insects as come in and I learn about all the time, only 2% of the world's insects are uh, actually pests, whether they're human pests or pests to animals or pests to plants that, that we have problems with. The rest of them are, just are, are, are good to have around or, you know, we're kind of indifferent about them. Uh, you know, lots, lots of insects provide pollination and things mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. So. That's true. There's some mosquitoes out in my backyard, too. Yeah, those aren't so fun. But I have some mosquitoes. <laughs> but I would like to get me some of those tomatoes and put... I've got a pot about this big. Would that be big enough? Yeah, so long as it's pretty uh, deep. Oh, deep. Yeah, you need, need some depth. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you got any old five gallon buckets? Yeah. Drill some white ones? Yeah. Drill a hole in the bottom so they have some drainage. Oh, okay. You, you now, Dave was kind of wishing he would have put them around the side. Sides, yeah. Rather that than the too. bottom sure. because of it. He thought they'd drain better. Yep. But yeah, they, they need some type of drainage. Anytime you have a container for a plant, you need drainage. What kind of soil would you put in that? Whatever you want to. If, you, if you've if you got access or, or the ability to buy some potting soil, that works just fine. Um, okay. Or dig out some garden soil. Sometimes we, we have problems with diseases, with tomatoes in particular, so sometimes that sterile potting mix is your best option. I was thinking that. Yep. Because my garden, uh, well, we didn't put one out last year, but the year before, they didn't do very good. We've had some rough gardening years, and tomatoes are the number one garden plant, so they're also the number one call in my office in the <laughs> summertime with problems. They just were terrible. We have lots and lots of disease problems with tomatoes. I had one tomato last year. Yep. And last year's, <laughs> last year's tomato, lots of people gave up on gardening, period, last year <laughs> by the time you got to midsummer because we had so much rain. I know. And I heard lots of people say, give me the drought of 2012 again. I can water. I can do something about that. I can't do anything about, about all the rain, too yeah. much water and, and plant diseases. <coughs> so, yep. <coughs> yep. So it won't be long till, I mean, it's a ways off, but Heritage Days will be here before. July. Yeah, that'll be in October. Oh, yeah. And the way this year's going, it'll be very quick. <laughs> well, we give up on the garden. I don't put a garden out in the back anymore. <laughs> <laughs> My neighbors had the biggest garden last year, and I tell you, their tomatoes were terrible. Yep, and that was pretty Everything much... Everything was. That was pretty much everybody last year. I think, what did they have? Was it their zucchini? That might have been... No, that didn't even turn out very good. I mean, their garden was just lousy. Yep. I mean, it was just... Too much rain, too much disease problems last year. I'm glad we didn't put one I out. have seen a lot of pretty gardens so far this year. Now, if we don't yeah. get some rain, <laughs> yeah, it, might not, be it might not last too long. But, uh, but yeah, seen lots of pretty gardens, so we'll see. Uh, hopefully, we do get some rain. We definitely need it. I'm so so now, do they have a good turnout for the um, garden walk? Uh, Saturday it rained, so mm -hmm. that wasn't so good. <laughs> uh, people still come out to buy plants in the rain regardless, um, but uh, uh, Sunday was uh, probably the best Sunday we've ever had. And oh, I really? guess that was because okay. the weather was nice on Sunday, and they couldn't have come out all, the day before. So and it was we, even a little bit cooler. Yeah, it yeah. was a nice day. So uh, overall, yeah, I think we did really well. The ticket okay. sales were down, but as I said, that's because of, of Saturday right. and raining. Right. So, um, but yeah, it was, it was good and pretty gardens. Good. Lots of plants. They sold lots and lots of plants, so. Yeah, that's a good place to buy them. Yep. I was out of town, so I didn't get to that. Now, do those um, mosquito plants and the lemongrass, do they really keep mosquitoes away, or is that a tail? Um, they attend, uh, mosquitoes love me, and so, um, <laughs> I try lots of different things, and, but rubbing the mosquito stuff on your, if you break a leaf off of a mosquito plant and rub it on your arm, I've also used some of my mints and rubbed it, and they seem to help some. 
Okay, um, so that, that is true. Yeah. They don't like that smell. Though. Yeah, it, it seems to help some, at oh, least. Okay. I'll take anything, quite honestly, because yeah. if, if there's a mosquito around, it's going to find me. Yeah. Eli, my daughter, they love her. And, and I read an article recently. They said it's it's some extent to a blood type. Uh -huh. They they like certain blood types. So I was like, oh well, that makes sense. Why my dad and I always are the ones that get nailed, and nobody else does. So, uh, I was like, oh okay. <laughs> my nephews used to get bit so much that they would get infantile when they were little kids. Oh. And so the doctor told my sister to make sure that load them up on vitamin B. Okay. And that seemed to help them. But yeah, there's the lots and lots of mosquito diseases, born diseases I now, know, and I of was course surprised. the tick, tick diseases. So. Oh, and ticks are bad this year. Oh yeah. Yep. Because my kids had, uh, they had to go and do their yard. They were getting so many ticks. Yep. They had to spray the yard. Because Tyler, I think, had about three on the other day, and Sue had a couple, and my so they gosh. had to spray their whole yard. Yep. No, I haven't had any out in the yard yet. Ticks don't like me, or I've never been uh, in them. Uh, well, that's except good. one, yeah, <laughs> one time out at Rocky. I mean, at um, Goose Creek, we went out there years and years ago when our kids were little. We got in a seed seed, seed bed tick. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yes, those seed are always tick fun. bed. Yes. Oh my gosh, we were brushing the ticks off the kids and all of our pants. Tape. Oh. Tape works wonderful. Oh, that's a good idea. Well, we didn't have any tape sure, with us. Sure, yeah. <laughs> no, we didn't but have yes. any tape with us. We just brush, brush, brush. Uh huh. What's stripped good? Stripped down and looked at them. Tape. Tape to oh. get them off. Yeah. Uh, also, it's good to tape boots and pant legs down so they don't have a way to get, get in. Get in? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we used to always put sulfur in when we were. Uh huh. Girl Scout. Chiggers, yeah. Yeah, for chiggers and bugs and whatever. Okay. Yeah, the bugs don't like my blood, so I guess. Well, that's good. <laughs> that's not a bad thing. No, it's not a bad thing. Uh, they but, like to buzz around my ears, though, and I don't uh, like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they used to always tell me that being so dark all the time, I never got, they didn't like it or I never did, but I never did get bit very much. Huh. Hardly at all. Skiers don't just look at them. <laughs> they just look at me. And on you go, ooh, I don't like that. <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah. And they don't like something about me. <laughs> That's good. And Sue is fair complected. And those they really nail her. Oh my gosh. They really do. Any kind of bug. I mean, bees, they like her too. Just just, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So when you do this class for the food preservation, you teach them how to like seal the jars. I mean, you go through the whole process yes. with them? Yes, Mary, uh, I don't teach it. Uh, Mary Schrope for our nutrition specialist will be down to teach it. She's the expert. And um, yes, they will go through everything from even cutting up the pickles and uh, everything that, that goes into the process. So. Um, so well, that's a good education then. Yes. Where's it's, this held in? It's going to be at the extension office. Oh, okay. Yep, because we have the kitchen and uh, so they oh, have, that's right. have a spot to do it. And yeah, that's really neat. Yep. Uh, actually, it, it was funny. I, I've known Mary since I started with extension, but she when she called to arrange this class, that was the most I have ever heard her talk, and she was so excited about this oh, opportunity to do this. Yeah. So um, it was a new program, and she just was so thrilled and says, okay, we, uh, and quite honestly, I couldn't hardly keep up with her. She, <laughs> so, she was talking so fast, and okay, this is what we're going to do, and this is how we're going to go about it. I was like, oh, great. I hope we can get some kids to sign up, and we did have, yeah. have uh, It's a shame so. they didn't know this when school was still in. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't think we had it, had everything ironed out by that time. But, yeah. Because you probably would have gotten more. Let yeah. me see that thing a minute. But, um, well, hopefully it fills up because that sounds like that's Yeah, so, nice. so yeah, we have three spots left for tomorrow, and then if we had some more, she'd do it again, I think, uh, next uh, Thursday. How many do you have already? I think we had seven. 
So I think we have th three spots. She can only do ten. Ten. Mm -hmm. uh, to keep track of them all. What is fruit leather? Thing? So like your fruit roll-ups. So, oh, so okay. yeah, as a, as, as a kid in 4-H, we did uh, apple leather. So you basically took applesauce and you spread it out real thin and dehydrated it, basically. Oh. So I don't know what kind of well, uh, dumb. fruit leather she plans to make tomorrow, but uh, I always, we always enjoyed doing that as kids, too. I wouldn't even mind doing that as an adult. Yes, I, I always <laughs> I, uh, Yeah, I'm, I still like to eat fruit snacks and fruit roll-ups and... I was just thinking that myself. Yep. I'm always picking around with snacks. Okay. And they have some new uh, guide sheets and stuff on food preservation. And Cindy was just looking at them the other day in the office as she was printing stuff off for this class. And she says, wow, they've got some cool new recipes she was talking about with uh, different stuff with pineapple she was talking about, like a pineapple salsa, which was oh, interesting. Really? Something oh, and gosh. just. Uh, several other things that I was like, oh, well, that sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah. So. Did you put that on Facebook too, huh? Have you? Uh, on our extension website we have, and I think I did have it on our, our extension Facebook oh, okay. page. You but don't I need to snap it and stick it on there. It, yeah, if you want to. Okay. That might get a few. Yep. I'm going out to the nutrition yeah. center tomorrow, and I'm going to put this on a piece of paper and put it where everybody comes in. Because a lot of them got grandkids and everything. Sure. And they're always looking for something for them to do. Yep. Yeah, even out at the, if they do another class, even out at the summer program. Yes. Uh, you know, to have yep. them bring some of the kids in uh -huh. that want to do that. Mm -hmm. That would be good, too. Yep. And uh, hopefully, in the, well, when we get moved out to the community center next year, the, there'll be even better opportunities to, uh, to work together. Are you surprised you were moving? That's where you went to? Uh, uh, kind of. Brad had talked about it before and he said, hey, here, here's an option. Uh, are you interested? I was like, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, because <laughs> so, there's so much. Yeah. And, and I think we can partner together and do a lot more together as right. uh, programs. And, right. and then, of course, with the library, I've been doing quite a few programs with the, the library uh, evening talks on gardening oh, stuff. You? So oh, yeah. uh, we've kind of stopped that for the summer because, as I said, people don't like to come to gardening programs this time of year. They're out in the gardens right. or uh, right. uh, go in too many different directions in the summertime. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I'd like to oh my like make a you know like piece sure. of paper like this and lay it there because a lot of time when people come in we have this table like if there's somebody mm -hmm. that's in a hospital or deceased sure. it comes out there all the time we put it out in different mm -hmm. little programs we lay it out there where people can see it yeah and you can keep these also and i think i may have another one of those in the truck that you can have oh well, that's really that's really interesting it is and, and Mary does classes for adults also, but uh, yeah, she as I said, this one she she was really excited with it about because it was something different. Oh yeah, yeah and these results. Are so much oh fun. yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't have any scheduled at the moment, but uh, if that's something you think people would be interested in, uh, yeah, she'll she hmm. we could schedule something. And hopefully she Mary's about retirement age, and so hopefully she she hangs on for a while yeah. because sometimes, uh, well, of course the university is on our hiring freeze right now, so uh, we don't want anybody to leave. <laughs> so if yeah. she would leave, they wouldn't replace her then. Uh, it just could be that it takes a while. Oh, okay, for it to get approved yeah. and then go through the process yeah. and all that stuff. So, yeah, I'm gonna. Yep, yeah, all sweet. the fun budget issues that uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hear about from campus. But. Yeah. And then these things, they can't enter into the Yeah, they fair. could they could enter them in the fair. Um, if, they're four, in too. if they're 4-H members, of course, it could go in the 4-H categories, but uh, I think there are open class categories that, and youth categories right. at the fair, so. Yeah. So not only do they get to make it, then they could get a ribbon on it and get some prize money too. Mm -hmm. We used to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I used to do it all the time. That's how I, I as a uh, kid, I 4-H and FFA, I used to ra raise enough money through fair premiums that I could go on the 4-H trips or the FFA trips. So. Oh, really? Yep. 
the uh, merchants used to let us uh, put our put things in the window. Mm-hmm. We'd have 4-H oh, week and stuff, and they'd, okay. they'd yeah. give us a window, and we could decorate it up. window display. Neat. So it was pretty neat. We enjoyed that. And when we got older, we had like a, um, like a youth. We uh, had like popcorn and things. We had movies down in underneath in the basement, and we had mm -hmm. pool tables, and we had jukeboxes, and we just had all kinds of stuff going, and we had people from 14 on up. All right. 14 to 18. And that was all 4-H. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds neat. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a lot of fun. We had a good time. We'd have Halloween parties and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I mean, I don't know. I got out of it and I don't know, all of a sudden everybody just quit. <laughs> they just quit having it. It was bad because you'd grow up with 4-H and you're growing into that stuff. It's fun. It is. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, so hopefully there's a lot of kids that belong. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope we we get the numbers uh, up. That, you know, they kind of go ups and downs. So, mm -hmm. so we definitely could use some more kids. It probably depends on whose friend is in Girl Scouts <laughs> sure. and whose friend sure. is in 4-H. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably yeah. has a lot to do with oh, it. Oh, yeah, anymore. Yeah. Cause I didn't. And, and I think too, kid, nowadays kids are going 500 different directions. Oh, dear, so, so oh. yeah, that kind of makes some of it. Yeah, tough. they all play that, ball. All the activities play. that are out there. So too much. That's yeah, for sure. Oh, and before I forget, since we talked about the fair, uh, Cowchip uh, Squares. Oh. Okay. Uh, you know, account, extension council members are, are have have their tickets. They'll be selling cow chip uh, tickets. Uh, that's the extension council's fundraiser um, mm -hmm. at the fair, and uh, the event actually happens at the fair. But uh, tickets are five dollars, and of course, uh, prizes are pretty good if you get pooped on. Mm -hmm. so, if you got the right number. If you got the right number and get uh, get pooped on, uh, top prize is three hundred dollars. So. That's pretty good. Well, that's yeah, gonna be neat. So, uh, and they've been doing it. We well. Uh, How many years is that now? You know, I I don't know exactly, but we found uh, a note on it from the '80s. So they've been doing oh, it at least uh, since oh, the '80s my um, because we've been cleaning out filing cabinets uh, mm -hmm. as uh, you know, so we don't have to do it all when we move. Right, <laughs> so we've right. been gradually doing that, particularly when uh, the internet was out for three days at the office. Uh, it was like, okay, well. We'll tackle some filing cabinets. So we found some interesting things, but at least one thing I found that they were doing it in the 80s. So. Oh my gosh, that is a long so time. So it's been going for a long time. And the council uses a lot of that money for uh, scholarships for youth, for different activities, that type of thing. So it all goes back into the community. To the youth. Yep. Are you all moving yeah. from down here? Yes, uh, when the new building at the community center goes up, um, that's where we'll be. We'll have office space there. Oh, so we're excited about it. Yeah, they sure like that Challenger field and the playground. The, the playground, yes. Oh my gosh. You know, actually, I had a coworker from Jefferson County that she'd heard about the playground and brought her daughter down to to play on the the new playground. So uh, she said she really enjoyed it. Except I told her she should have called me first because that's when 32 was closed for the oh. flooding and she, she had, to, had to detour all around and I forget where her GPS center, it was a little crazy. I was like, oh, I wish you would have called first. I could have told you a much easier way to get to town. <laughs> Yeah, but is, yeah, yeah, so so you know, a word has gotten around about the the um, the new playground, mm -hmm. and lots of kids are very enjoyed it. Yeah. I know a lot of people at Riverview like to sit out there and watch, oh, watch them, them. Watch, them. Yeah. Sure. watch those kids. Oh, they get a big bang out of that. Yeah, I bet. And that's because they always talk about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah, it's that's nice that, that everything's out there. Mm-hmm. Yep. But it's a shame though that the park didn't, doesn't have the swimming pool anymore. Yeah, An outside swimming pool still. Yeah, for I summertime. Can, right. I still think they need it, but I don't know why they ever. I don't know. I think they should have found a way to keep it going. They just filled it in. <laughs> well, it would have cost too much. They yeah, had I know. a valid reason to, to close it down. The pumps were bad and the. Getting they had a lot of repair and a lot of expense to put on mm -hmm. to it. I could see that. More than what 
Sometimes That's you can't do that. Yeah. Yep. But it still would be nice to have. An Olympic size. I hope they do the Olympic size when they do out there. If they the don't, they're making park. a big mistake. Yeah. yeah. I know Brad reported that they're working with a consulting firm and getting yeah, they started had that on the paper that. this yep. week. Yeah. Yep. There's places in St. Louis that do that too. I'm, I'm wondering why they didn't contact them. Oh, I because they've yeah. done a lot of um, years ago. I did research and brought it to the city, but it was a Nicks right away, you know, that was, mm -hmm. can't do that. Okay. <laughs> you know? And I think at that time, you know, like a, a million and a quarter, did a really, really nice one with a big mm -hmm. Olympic sized pool. Probably it's more now, but because that was probably in the, uh, maybe right around the end of the 90s. Maybe even into the 2000s, I don't mm -hmm. remember. Well, I ran across those papers the other day, and I was thinking, well, now yeah. they're finally going to do it, but it, not in the yeah. right place. Yeah. <laughs> no. Finally managed to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a shame. Yeah. But yeah, but this goes. place must be really big because it said they built thousands of pools, international and national. Wow. So that's what it said in the paper. <laughs> So, there we are. Good enough. Uh, so, you want to go over all your information again and then... Uh, sure. Uh, just uh, tomorrow is the food preservation class for youth. And as I said, we have three more spots for that. So, if you're interested, uh, call the office in the morning at 883-3548 because it starts at 830. Uh, and then... Um, if if we have some more interest, um, she will come do it again the next week. Okay. Uh, Twilight Tours, uh, the Mineral Area College one is July 5th, and that's from 6 to 8 p.m., $5 registration. Call me so we uh, just have an idea of the numbers because you can pay at the door. Uh, the St. Genevieve County uh, 4-H Fair and Chicken Fry is July 13th, and then, of course, that's followed by the County Fair and Cow Chip Lotto. Uh, for for our extension council fundraiser and uh, yeah that's a, a little less than a month from now and that'll be here before we know it definitely and of course uh, as I said we have uh, the brochures for the state fair if anybody's interested in going and uh, if you've uh, talked to somebody who has gone they always say it's a, a worthwhile event and that's coming up in August so and then always you can check our, our uh, website. I'm fairly good at keeping the, the website up to date on upcoming events. Sometimes I'm a little iffy on Facebook. Sometimes I do better <laughs> for a while and then I get distracted with other things. And, and But the, the Extension Office has a Facebook page too that if okay. anybody's interested. You have a website and a Facebook. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think yep. you can get to both of them by just Googling St. Genevieve Extension. Sure. Okay. Okay, so I guess we'll have a short program tonight. And I think thank you very much You're for welcome. coming and sharing your information Thanks with us. Thanks for coming. Mm -hmm. And if you want to come back before the fair and yeah. talk some more, that well, would be great. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll see what. Uh, yeah. If you have time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I, it, we've been talking about coming on for our uh, trying to work right. it out with you for <laughs> two or three months here. And, yeah. and my Wednesday night schedule all of a sudden was pretty crazy. So. Yeah, that's what happens. Yeah. yeah, you just never know. Yeah. So the next time we're going to have um, options for women here. Yes, yeah, Shirley Moore. Mm -hmm. And probably another guest or so. We'll f see what happens between now and then. <laughs> so I guess that's it for tonight. So thank that's you for it. watching. And everybody take care. And uh, hopefully Marianne will be back with us soon. Or at some point. Hope so. so she's okay. getting better. <laughs> That's good. Stronger That's good is better. So hi Mary if you're watching. <laughs> yeah. So good night everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>